Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing the career expansion to Hostage Negotiator, as well as some extra little bits that we got from their recent Kickstarter. Uh, Hostage Negotiator is a solo only game, uh, plays in about 15 to 30 minutes, and you are going to need the base game uh, to play this. This is not a standalone expansion. You will need the base game um, in order to play with this new material. So. First of all, we're going to go through uh, some of these little extra pieces we got here. These are just things that uh, we didn't already have uh, for Hostage Negotiator, so we picked them up with the Kickstarter. First here, we have uh, Abductor Pack number nine. So if you've never played Hostage Negotiator, these uh, Abductor Packs are basically the hostage takers, and they're each uh, unique. They have their own actually tells you they have their own tarot cards, they have their own um, demands, which are different from other characters. Uh, this one actually has a special setup, uh, which you shuffle petty demands into the tarot deck, which is interesting. So here is our abductor, Misha. I'm not even gonna pr try to pronounce that last name. It tells you what her starting demands are, uh, any special rules, it tells you where she starts on the, the threat track, essentially, and the number of hostages she has. And then back here, you just got some flavor text. Here are her demand cards. So there is a little bit of variability here. There's two major demands, two escape demands. You're only going to use one per game. So a little bit of variability there. She's got paranoia cards, which are uh, a new mechanic, uh, I believe, just to her. And then here are her petty demand cards, which will get shuffled into the terror deck, which is interesting. Um, you, it's not uncommon to see demand cards in the terror deck, uh, but I, I believe this is a lot more than you would normally get. So that's interesting. And that's all everything you're going to get in that abductor pack. Again, these are um, these are just new hostage takers. And this is all the information that you get basically from a Hasha's Taker, all the cards that they're required to have. Um, here is the man pack number two. So this adds extra variability to previous abductors. So new major and escape demands. So yeah, it tells you which, which abductor they apply to. Uh, Don't harm our kids is only applied when cultist kids is drawn from the terror deck. So here we got some New escape and major demands. Some new tarot cards. And it shows you up here a picture of who they apply to. Abductor pack number 10. So the special setup. For this abductor, create the tarot deck by shuffling the two. What could possibly give me cards with eight red tarot cards? Remove all conversation cards that have an abductor eliminated effect from the game. You can't eliminate him. That's interesting. And then they have two new conversation cards. And then there's a disarm sequence. So it looks like this guy. Yep, this guy's a bomber. And you have to go through a disarm sequence. Interesting. No starting demands. He cannot be eliminated. You can only capture him after you have defused the bomb. That's very interesting. So these are new cards that you'll be able to buy with your conversation points uh, that are specific to him. And he's got cyber demands. Huh. He looks very interesting. We've got, I believe these are from the, uh, the Kickstarter. So these are specific uh, hostage negotiators. You can essentially uh, pick, pick a, a specialty or a a specific hostage negotiator, and then it gives you special abilities. Okay. Some more negotiators here. I'm just going to go through these fairly quickly. If there's any in particular that interests you, feel free to pause and get a better look at their uh, special abilities. But these are just like the last one, except we got another abductor back here. So this one, you don't know who the abductor is. You only reveal the abductor if you reveal two demands in a single conversation. And then you shuffle the other abductive cards to randomly select the true abductor. That just seems like, uh, that seems difficult. 
Uh, more negotiator cards. Okay. All right, so let's get into the career box itself, which um, for its size is, is really dense. So career adds a lot of new elements to the game. Go ahead and flip through the rule book here. So career adds all these cards up here to the game now. So you have career cards, you have a deck of abductors, so you're not going to choose which abductor you play with. You're just going to shuffle the deck. You have personal story events. You have potential traits, both bad and good traits that you can add. You have potential stressors. You also have a rank here and you're, you're going to get sheets that, uh, that track all this information. So let's continue looking at what we have here. We have our career finale here that comes with the base game. Uh, this is gonna be a bit of a spoiler. So if you're interested in this finale or any of the other ones, we actually have uh, an alternate finale here. And I believe there's one more in the stretch goals. We'll be taking a look at all of these finales uh, as well as the other sort of spoiler type information at the very end of the video. So if you're interested, stick around for this. We're not going to look at it now. We've got our tracking sheets for our campaign. So here's where you're going to keep track of everything that happens during the course of a career for you. Um, if you had didn't notice on the back of the rule book, it has the same sheet in case you need to print off some more. These are double sided, as you can see and they do give you three. So that's a total of six careers to go through. But if you play more than that, you do have the ability to print off more. These are nice stock, a little thicker than paper, almost like a card stock. But you can see all the different things that you'll be keeping track of here. Here's where you'll be keeping track of your different years. So you'll be running through 10 years total in a career and the rule book explained how to fill these out. Basically, you'll be keeping track of how you did against various abductors. Uh, your merit can go up or down, and that determines whether or not you get promotions, which you can see up here. You can actually go up uh, the chain of command. You have a career stress stat and a personal stress stat, which will go up and down. And then you can keep track here of any stressors you gain, any traits, and any rewards. Here we've got some little tokens just to keep track of those uh, those stats we just talked about. So we got a little star to keep track of our merit, a little shield keeps track of our career stress and a heart to keep track of your personal stress. Here we've got our little, uh, I forget what they call these. Uh, they were very popular in 90s cereal boxes, um, sort of a decoder type thing. Uh, I love the fact that they use these. There's a couple other games that use these like Nemesis. Um, and for me of someone at my age, it just, it's very nostalgic. So that's really cool. We've got some, some more little hidden information boxes that we're not going to go through here, but based on the size, I'm going to guess these are dice. And again, these are things we'll look at at the end of the video if you're interested, but I don't want to spoil it for anybody who's, who doesn't want to see them. So here's some more cards again. More hidden information here. So more things to look at. This basic set of cards here, we can go ahead and take a look at though. So you've got your rank cards for your different rank. Your officer detective. And these give you abilities. So you'll start as officer every time and immediately this is your beginning rank. Choose either the base game or crime wave conversion card set to use for your career. And then as you go on, you've got immediate bonuses when you rank up. And then if you become a captain, you've got an ongoing bonus. You got trait cards. So trait cards you can acquire throughout the course of your career. Some of them are good, like being respected. 
Respected is a single-use card. You can discard this card to look at the results of any career or finale card before making a choice. And then some are not so bad, like, or not so good, I should say, like uh, being divorced. You lose all spouse stressors, and your personal stress may never drop below three. I don't know if that's good or bad. And then some reward cards. Most of these cards you'll gain through resolving the different uh, yearly cards, which we'll get into later. Uh, but basically, you can gain these, you know, you gain promotions. And anytime you gain something that has multiple cards, you're just going to shuffle those cards up before you draw one. Promotion, roll for promotion after each career card is resolved. Once you're successful, remove this card from the game and increase your rank. So basically, it's like getting fast-tracked on promotion. You know it's coming, you just, you get more, more chances for it. And then other rewards you can get getting trained in different things like CPR, getting some type of advanced skill, and there's quite a few of those. And once you have these traits, that'll sometimes unlock other options when you're going through career events. And then here you have the campaign abductors. So instead of picking an abductor, you're going to have a deck of abductors. And I don't think you're going to use all of these at once. I think, um, I believe that you start with a, a set deck of them, but basically you're gonna shuffle them up. And if you have an abductor encounter that year, you're just gonna do the top one. You don't always have an abductor each year though. So here are our career cards and there's gonna be quite a few of these. And while we're looking at that, let's look at career year zero. So the way that these work, is you're gonna be doing 10 years throughout the course of your career or your campaign. And you're gonna be doing one event per year, but there are more than obviously just one event to do to give the game some replayability. So at the very start here, you're gonna go through all the tens. You're just gonna shuffle them up or pick one randomly and select one 10. That's your year 10. And then you do it the same way for each year. Just pick one. And then if you have career year zero, there's only one of these, but you'll put that on top. And you'll do that before any others. So here are all your career cards from year 10 to one. And then at the back here, you've got personal cards and then stressors. So these stressors, you're gonna gain just like you would the traits and the rewards. If you go through one of your career events and they tell you to add a stressor, you're gonna shuffle up that particular stressor, whatever it may be, and then you're gonna draw one. Stressor cards get resolved at the very beginning of the year, so they're gonna be the leftmost card in your row of cards that you're activating. But obviously in year one or in year zero, you're not gonna have a stressor to begin with. And then personal cards, you're gonna resolve one of these each year. So you could go through and pick out 10 or just leave them in the stack as they are. And then the way you resolve these is pretty straightforward. You're just gonna flip it over. You're going to read the text that it gives you here, and then you're gonna make a choice. And you're gonna use your little revealer here. So let's go ahead and do this year zero, just because it's the only one there. So it's there's not much risk in spoiling this. And let's see if you guys can actually see if let's say we tell Tony or Steve, see if you can get that on camera. Well, you can see that applying this little revealer gives you your answer. So you won't know exactly what you're getting until you go through it. And then you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna read the rest of the text as well. But that's just the career year zero card, which is kind of just um, for fun. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this one right here. So career year one, it tells you immediately add these different abductors. So you're gonna have five different abductors specifically added to the abductor deck. Then you're gonna flip it over. It says you're fresh out of training Hardly a day goes by that you don't endure hazing of some sort by the other negotiators. Tradition, they say. 
keeps you on your toes until your first call. And then it just reminds you to form the abductor deck. And then you have options here. You can go tell the chief that the hazing has gotten too much and it's now a distraction, or you just endure the hazing despite the effects. And you can kind of guess where this is going. I assume if you pick this one, probably your personal stress is going to go up um, or go down rather, but maybe your career stress will go up. But let's tell the, let's do this one real quick. So let's tell the chief. You can see that it says things settle down at work, but now the vets won't give you the time of day. So your career stress goes down one because your job's a little bit easier without all the hazing, but your personal stress goes up because now you, you're having difficulty with your coworkers and then you gain a stressor colleagues. So you're going to go through the stressor deck, shuffle those up and pick one and you go on. And just when you think it is never going to happen, you get the call with nervous excitement. You head to the scene, draw a campaign abductor, and then you're going to resolve that abductor like you would a normal game of hostage negotiator. Now in year two, because you've got that stressor card, you're going to resolve the stressor card before you resolve this career year two card. And that may change things. So that's all your career cards. Then you'll go through the abductor campaign um, and however that resolves. And then you'll get to a personal card and you'll just draw a personal card. And it's again, it's the same system that we've already seen. Just read the text, make one of your choices. And then there's an outcome at the bottom as well. So that's everything you got in the regular game. But let's look at now what we got in our stretch goals here. Now, Van Ryder is usually pretty good about making these sort of um, these stretch goals available after the fact. So even if you didn't participate in the Kickstarter, you may be able to find these items on their store before much longer. So we've got an extra die here. We've got a little bag, possibly for our... Um, Hostage meeples, maybe. We've got more career zero cards. So more options now in career year zero. We've got another finale, which again, we'll, we'll get to later. If you're interested, stick around. You've got another little rule book here, but most interesting to me are these career achievements on the back here, which look really interesting. So just Explaining new abductor packs. We've already looked at some of these. We've already unboxed them earlier, but, and this is the frustration die. All right. So we've got some more of these personality cards for you to choose from. We got the chief and the hater. We've actually got some meeples here. For different uh, different abductors, which is cool, and then we've got these cards, which I'm not familiar with. Ooh, a bit of a drastic cutting error on that one. I'll have to take some scissors to that one. Oh, these are just more. Uh, these are the dividers to add to your ooh. So these are just more dividers to add to your to your box. All right, so that's everything we have so far with the base game and also the stretch goals. Now, if you want to stick around, we're going to take a look at the items that we haven't unboxed yet, which are going to contain some spoilers. So here's your warning to tune out if you don't want to see those spoilers. All right, so let's go ahead and look at what I assume are three new dice. And they are numbered. I assume they tell you when to open them. All right. So I, I'm assuming these just are going to replace one of your three dice. Maybe if, um, I don't know, your, your stress level or, or your rank or something gets high enough. It looks like. Okay, these aren't quite the same. And then our last one.
bit of a ooh. It's got a two on it, but it's it's missing a lot of sides. Got a bit of a inking error on that one. Okay, let's go and look at these card packs here. And see what these are about. From the size, I'm assuming they're either. Oh, I would have been wrong. So these upgrades, these cards upgrade your starting zero cost cards, remove the basic versions of the game. So new basic starting cards in there. New starting cards. Again, same thing. Replace your starting cards here. Let's see if this is the same. Yep. Two new starting cards, which makes you wonder how you get these. Maybe it's a rank thing. All right, so last thing we've got is our finales here. Um, just a reminder, this is probably the most spoiler thing in here. So only stick around if you're really interested. So we've got a career finale. After your 10 years, you're gonna do a finale. So it looks like which one you get, or these are your endings. So which ending you get is gonna be determined probably by how well you do on this. Here's your finale, and that's obviously your abductor. And there are more than one. There's quite a few of these. So a nice amount of variability there, even with the same finale. And then we got a prologue. So obviously you do prologue and then you do one of the finales and then based on how well you're going to do an ending. I mean, let's go ahead and look at this prologue and see what we got going on here. So it looks at the end of the story here. We go after this guy and uh, he's not where we think he is. And then we end up back at home and he's waiting for us. Okay. And then it's got a, a, some more setup here, but then it just, you go to a finale card. So... You're just gonna pick one of these at random and resolve it. And then if you failed this card, remove one die of your choice from the game. If you have none remaining, resolve ending B. Okay, so yeah, depending on how you do on this card, you're gonna it's gonna determine your ending. And I won't spoil the ending because I don't want to spoil it for myself. And I assume you don't want to get spoiled as well either. But we've got some alternate finales here. Let's go and take a quick look at those. I wonder if they're using a different abductor. So again, we've got multiple endings. Oh, yep, here we go. And a different prologue. But this is one of those cards we got earlier the chief so i assume that the other finale is going to be the hater so here we've got our alternate finale and these seem to work the same way um you're not really doing this isn't like an abductor it's just a, a final event i do like the variability i mean i think it's something that they kind of are required to do just uh, the style of the game. If it wasn't some variability, it would just be, wow, that looks serious. Okay. This one looks really interesting. Let's take a look at the prologue here. Pack your bags. You're going to Washington. There's an imminent nuclear threat and the president has called for the best negotiators in the nation. Hmm. Very interesting. And I assume when you get to the finale, you're just going to pick whichever one you want. Uh, I didn't really see any mechanism in the base game for whether you're doing the regular finale or finale one or finale two. So I assume when you get to that point, you'll just decide on your own which one to do. But that's it. Now you've seen everything that you would have gotten in a copy of... Hostage Negotiator career, including the stretch goals and all the little extras that were available during the Kickstarter campaign.